Good afternoon. I'm Rick Marshall, the president of Vertical Geo. We are a service disabled veteran owned small business in O'Fallon, Illinois. And we specialize in the creation and integration of geospatial data. And we've been using QGIS for about the last 10 years. Uh, this presentation will provide an overview using the QGIS print layouts function. For this presentation, I'm using QGIS version 3.28. I'll go ahead and go to QGIS. And uh, here we have a um, overview of the project I'm working on. I have a customer that wants a four foot by eight foot wall map uh, printed in a printed format. And although I've been using QGIS for years, I've never had a request for a printed wall map. I didn't find uh, hardly any resources on either YouTube or on the internet in general. So I thought I'd create a video outlining how to do the project. Um, if you want to share your QGIS map with another QGIS user, you can send them your map file or a layer file. Um, what I'm showing you right now is what the map file looks like for, the, for this QGIS project. If you send another user your map file or a layer file, they can reconstruct your map on their system. And it will look just like uh, what you have on, on your uh, open version of QGIS. The map file is very powerful and it contains the state of your map in QGIS. It organizes and saves all the references for each layer and all the links. So in this uh, QGIS map file, you can control layering, as we see over here on the left. These are all the different layers uh, in the QGIS file. The, it draws the layers from the bottom up. So the very bottom layer I have is my base map. It's the aerial photography, and this layer is from the National Agricultural Imagery Program from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, every three years or so, they go all throughout the U.S. and collect aerial photography that has a resolution of a minimum of three meters or three feet, one meter. And in urban areas, they collect it down to one foot. And let me show you what the resolution looks like on the imagery. It's really good. It takes a minute to resolve, but um, you, can, you can get really good high quality imagery for free from the U.S. Department of Agriculture's NAEP imagery program. Um, so these are the different layers. I've got the Treasure Valley. Let me uh, zoom back out to the Treasure Valley AOI. Um, an AOI is an area of interest. So this, as you can see here, the symbology, the red uh, outline is the Treasure Valley Overview uh, AOI. This is the entire area we are looking at today. The one below that is the blue area, the blue rectangle, and that is the Treasure Valley North AOI. And then we have this fluorescent green Treasure Valley South AOI. Um, we also have a layer in here called uh, Bureau of Land Management Township and Range Clipped. So that is all these squares you see. Uh, it's a surveying system where the townships and the ranges create these squares. And so the labeling that you see in the middle of each square is which township and range they are in. Um, and we have clipped that to the Treasure Valley Overview AOI. So the entire area that we're looking at has our township and ranges listed on it and the customer requested that. There's a couple of different ways. So the symbology works, um, QGIS works with these different layers. You can click on and off whichever layers you want to view. So we can remove the uh, township and range layers or we can remove the um, overview AOI layer, uh, or we can even remove the imagery if we want. There are lots of 
maps that you create on QGIS that don't have an imagery base map. They may just have a uh, street map base map, or they may not have a base map at all. Um, so these are the different layers. And up above are the different bookmarks. We can save bookmarks to uh, take us back to where we really want to be on the, uh, the map. So um, right now I have the Treasure Valley Overview AOI open, and we can go to the North AOI. I have a bookmark set for that. We can go to the South AOI. And then uh, there's an AOI um, that is pretty much the same one, but I created one for the South AOI rotated at 48 degrees because they want a horizontal wall map of this. So uh, anyhow, just all sorts of interesting things you can do with the um, with QGIS. Um, there's different ways. So the symbology, the red outline box for the overview AOI, the um, white squares with the white labeling inside them, these are all things that you can control how they look on your map file. Um, and they're all things that you can send to somebody else with QGIS to open that up the same way. Or they can take your your map file and they can change the symbology so maybe on this treasure valley overview AOI layer maybe they want a, a green line there well they can go in and change that to uh, display as green you can change uh, symbology or how the items look on your map in so many different ways same with labeling uh, we can choose not to have labels we can choose to display them the way we want Every one of these layers has all sorts of information included in the layer, and you can choose to label each layer based on the different information that you've got. Um, and the, uh, the map file also saves projection, geographic proje projection information. This is all done in um, a projection that works locally for um, the Boise, Idaho area. So these inputs are all embedded in the map file that QGIS uses to customize and draw your map. And if you want to share your map with someone else who doesn't use QGIS, you have to use a different format. The easiest way is to send a JPEG or a PDF copy of your map to the other person. And you can accomplish this by using the print layout function. And it allows us to share our maps with others uh, either in a printed or an electronic format so they can view our maps. And in this case, I'll be uh, creating a JPEG of the map I have here on my uh, Q open QGIS, and I'll send it to a customer about 2,000 2, miles away so they can download it off of our FTP site so they can then print and frame a four foot by eight foot wall map at their convenience. It's a pretty simple process once you've done it once, but um, there's not a whole lot of information out there on the web on how to do it, so that's why I'm creating this video. So to create a new print layout, you go up here to the project uh, drop-down list, you click on it, and you come down here to new print layout. And you can name it whatever you want, and today we're going to name it um, print layout. demo and we'll hit OK and this brings up the print layout um, page um, so what we're going to do is we want a four foot by eight foot uh, print so you can see we've got all sorts of tabs over here on the right where you can get information there's not any information in the item properties tab and that's information we're going to create. So if we right click on the map canvas, we can click on page properties and pop that up and it gives us some information on the page. I don't know what an A4 is. Uh, I know you can select letter, legal, but I'm gonna come down here and select custom size because we wanna make this a certain specific size. 
QGIS defaults to the metric system um, up here on the grids and the rulers and also down here in the uh, page sizes. It defaults to it, but we can change it. So we're gonna change this to inches. And eight feet is 96 inches wide is what we want. And we want four feet tall, which is 48 inches. We get this gobbledygook on here. We don't really know what it means, but let's go ahead and go to view zoom full and that'll give us a picture of our entire canvas and that canvas will be 96 inches wide by 48 inches tall eight feet wide by four feet tall to get the map on there it's pretty easy if we want to um, we can add the entire extent of this QGIS map file uh, very easily, and I'll show you how to do that. Come back here to our layout uh, page, and we go add item, add map, and then you just click and drag a rectangle where you want that map to be placed in the um, map canvas. It'll take a second to render, but it draws the exact same uh, map that you have in your QGIS uh, map file viewer. Um, the reason that you drag a rectangle out there is because you may not want to use up the entire four by eight foot canvas with your image. You may want to have a couple of inch margin around uh, the image so that you can uh, add things like a legend or you can add all sorts of items up here. So you could add um, a north arrow or markers or shapes or a legend. Uh, almost anything you want, you can add. But in this case, the customer only wants a um, four by eight foot photo. Okay, so this shows us some of the main properties over here in the item properties window. So you can see what the scale is, map rotation is zero. It's using the coordinate reference system or the geographic projection that was found in the original map file. You can change that here if you wanna change it to another projection by clicking on the select CRS button. Um, layers, uh, we're just leaving just the image the way it was. The extents, this is the extents um, I'm not sure what these numbers represent. Um, I know it represents latitude and longitude, but sometimes it's feet in meters um, from center line. It's just, um, anyhow, it's the same map extent that's on your map file. And you can see we can do all sorts of different things with the, the layout page. We can put grids on there, we can create overviews, we can change the position and size, we can rotate the map, we can create a frame, um, all sorts of items like that that we can use. And then just a general uh, list of variables that you can use. I didn't need any of the variables. This is all I needed. I've created my four by eight foot um, wall map that my user wants. You're going to see when we actually export this, it looks a little bit different because right now you've got this big four by eight foot wall map condensed down into about 12 inches by eight inches. And uh, when we zoom in and look at the pixels at 100%, which we will do in just a minute, you get a little bit different view of the um, what the JPEG looks like. And the JPEG formatting is a little different too. So I've showed you, uh, you can also come over here in the left margin and add things like the north arrow and a scale bar uh, and the labels, all that over here on the left margin also. But what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to export it. Um, so if you go to layout, click on that. I want to, ex you can export it as a PDF or an SVG file, but I want to export it as an image. 
you can see uh, because of the size of the image, uh, it's going to take a lot of disk space. In this case, 1.16 gigabytes uh, worth of uh, imagery. So I'm going to say OK. And then, um, so we come out here, we're going to do print layout demo one. And we're going to click on save. And then you're going to get a dialog box. There's some different variables you can change here. Uh, we want a very high resolution. We could leave it at 300 dots per inch, but I'm going to pick 200 because when they print it out and post it on a wall, um, it's going to be good enough for that. It tells you the page width, width in pixels and the page height in pixels. Um, we can crop it to a different extent if we want. Uh, we can zoom in and zoom out and uh, re recrop it to whatever we were seeing and uh, go out to create the JPEG. We just click on save. I've already, I just created one. I didn't want to do this on the video because it takes 10 minutes or so to 15 minutes of um, processing to create the JPEG. So I'll just open up the one that I just created. So I'm going to cancel this, open up the JPEG. Here's what the JPEG looks like. Uh, this is that entire area. And you can see the uh, township and range lines, the squares, are very faint here. Um, well, that's because this image is so big. To show it on our screen here, we're only looking at 9% resolution of the image. So what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom in to the image to a part of Boise and tell down here it shows about 100%. You can see as we zoom in the, the township and range lines, uh, they're only a pixel or two, two pixels wide, so they don't show up when you're zoomed all the way out. But when you zoom in to where the wall map will be printed, it shows up and you can you can see the, um, the AOI of the uh, Treasure Valley North, the blue boundary. You can see the green boundary of the Treasure Valley South. We're going to continue zooming in to the 100% place. This is what the wall map will actually look like when we have it uh, printed out. Uh, but it will be this whole thing, this is what the resolution will look like. Uh, this is the Boise Airport down here, um, other parts of downtown. But this is what the uh, full 100% version of the wall map resolution will look like. It'll just be, you know, blown out to eight feet wide by uh, four feet high. So as we go back to the 9%, this is, will be the extent, this will be the extent of the wall map, but it will be at the resolution I just showed you. Um, there's a lot of resources out there for people who have questions on how to do this, um, but a lot of them are for specific projects. There's a lot of places people can go to get live support and ask questions for QGIS help desk support or get quick responses to urgent questions. And we're happy to help uh, if you have problems and you can ask us any questions that you have through email or through our Vertical Geo, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Ga or Gab account direct messages, direct messaging. They're all located here on this slide, all of our contact information. Please don't uh, hesitate to contact me if you need help. Thanks a lot. It's been my pleasure to uh, share this information with you.